action dash up the up the steps. Okay. Are you gonna go? Get for the it? baby. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my god, are you going for it? I'm gonna. I'm gonna Dude. Turn around and yell at the manticore. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not um, the brave. <laughs> yeah. You want to save this thing? And I will slice down with my short sword on the baby. Make an attack roll. Oh, not the baby. Ooh, I mean, 14? It hits it. It's a, it's a baby. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, roll damage. Now it's uh, gonna die. Uh, eight. Oh, it's helpless. It's sneak attack. Oh, okay. It's, oh, it can't do anything. It can't defend it's itself. Eyes it's, it's eyes aren't open. Eyes oh, aren't even open yet. Oh, it's like pink. It's, uh, so it's... 3d6 on top of it. 16. 2d6 no, on top of it. 2d6. 16. Oh, 2D6. So 16 uh, damage? Uh, no, sorry. 17 damage. 17 damage. Oh, oh man. Oh, As you plunge the, your short sword down into the... The mewling, eye-covered cub. Oh, it goes no. still as the mother manticore flying up in the air turns oh, around and watches this, and just gives a. Oh. Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> oh, my oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> I take it back. Plan. Plan. No. <laughs> to the back. Yeah, we're gonna back. we're gonna we're start gonna flank to the back. flanking flanking to the back. Okay, as you guys are rushing, make a perception check. Okay, 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 okay. 20. Finally. 19. Okay. Finally. As you guys are rushing, you suddenly hear this very loud, high pitched whine sound. And you're like, ah. It kind of causes your head to look, and you, especially, glance over as you begin to surmise the direction. You look past, and you can see the tri spires there. And in the direction, you see the mighty Zauber spire of the Halls of Erudition there in the distance. And you see there this growing black spherical mass beginning to emerge from the side no. of the lower third of the tower. You watch as it expands, the whining gets louder and louder. I'm going to take <laughs> cover. You hear this crack sound as the black sphere suddenly folds into nothing. And where it was, you see all the stone that made that part of the tower collapse, crush, and then stumble. The tower <laughs> begins to slowly shift as you hear in the distance, screams echoing around. The music stops, and the attention of the guards suddenly shift over from the banging door to the tower crumbling. You watch as the tower, suddenly there's a flash of blue light, and the tower stops, and you see a, a brief shift of a force field on the bottom that holds it in place, partially collapsed. And you see two figures take off from the top. You see two, you see two other figures leap out of the hole from where the, the explosion, kind of weird black sphere was at the base of it, and leap down about 35, 40 feet below the tree line. And you see the two figures kind of begin coasting, flying through the air in the direction of where they were as bolts of energy start tsh, tsh, arcing out of their hands towards where those two other figures fell. The screams are getting louder now, and you can see now the guards are starting to rush out of the very street corners. You guys are <laughs> rushing around, like you were rushing towards the back and then kind of slowed as this started happening, just distracting you. You guys kind of start hearing this this cacophony outside as you rush through the back door. You get to the back uh, wall. What are you doing? There's something bigger going on other than us. We've got to get out of here. He yes. looks unconscious. We got to get him out. I I okay. uh, I try and um. We don't have any spells. I have I have a healing potion. I'll put it in Caleb's. I'll put it in Caleb's mouth. I try and okay. get that back door open and try and get them out. Okay, so you get that door open, you guys start rushing out there, you oh heal up God. Caleb, you come to consciousness being dragged, your feet kind of grinding. I was just doing death saves and it was not going well. So <laughs> <laughs> just, just for shits and giggles. <laughs> Alone upstairs, I pick up the scrolls and put them in my, my pocket. I mean, the house okay. is on fire now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the gable windows if they open and jump oh, open, the, the windows are shattered, okay. the explosion. Jump out the windows and scatter as far as I can. All right, make an acrobatics check. <laughs> as you land, your ankle kind of twists and you tumble and roll and you get up. And what's your stealth check? Uh, uh, 16. 16. Using the chaos that way and the guards that are now kind of out in the middle of the street, you land kind of behind them. One of them goes to turn in your direction and you dart behind the wall, leap over the side, and arc around to meet the rest of the party as you guys all slowly begin to climb over the back wall where Bo and uh, Molly are waiting for you. There, we've got to get out of here. Yeah. yeah. It's so bad. I think What's we are a bigger distraction. Yeah. I think there's something else Did going. Did we do this? No, we we get out of here. It's Molly, isn't it? They were one of the sewers. All right, everyone make a stealth check as you're trying to make your way through there. People are now starting to run back to their homes. You can see people running and screaming now, dressed in like full attire for the for the gala, just leaving their masks behind, screaming bloody murder. 15. Five, 12, Five, 14. 14. 
Okay. <laughs> Bunch of teens and a five. I know. That's okay. So a couple bad rolls, but for the most part, you guys averaged okay. Thankfully, the chaos and the way you're addressed, you managed to push through and mingle well. It wasn't too hard. You make your way through the town. You can see the tower still being held in place, and the the, the two figures that you saw gliding before, yeah. uh, as this is happening and you're rushing through, you see a few other bolts hit a large bolt of lightning <laughs> grind down in the distance before eventually they both begin to like peer over and are now looking up and down the streets. Um, as you make your way uh, back towards the alley, over by where the gala is, you see a shattered figure dart out from behind and a bolt of lightning strike. It. <laughs> There's a, a detonation, a burnt ozone as the figure falls to the ground smoking. I go over to the figure, I go over to the figure. As you walk over to the figure, you see one of the flying entities like kind of floating down. You can see now this robed mage figure with a staff in hand, uh, wearing a large, what looks like ornamental mantle. Uh, like long, kind of grayish hair is now just gliding down in the direction of the dark figure Don't on the ground. The male or female? Uh, male. Road figure. Steer big clear staff. of lightning people. Did you write that down? You remember? Age. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys see this as you come around. The figure. Age. The, oh, the age. Roughly from this distance, you, when you can see it's later, more, more older age, seventies human, if human. But you can't quite get the details. They start shouting. Right. One has fallen. Find the other. And kind of coasts back off and begins doing a pass, looking through the various streets. Once he's gone, I don't want to wait till. Oh, the guards have rushed forward and gone. grabbed the yeah. body and are dragging it back towards the tower. What does that body look like, though? Make a perception check. All you can see is is uh, the cloak. That the cloak is blocking most of the body. You see a hand behind that's like leather gauntlet, except for fingers exposed. Uh, the fingers uh, appear to be, but uh, it's a glove or a design of it. Have like almost like they were dipped in blue, like there's some sort of a blue tip glove as it's dragged back. Um, that's all the details you can make out, unfortunately, as it's being yeah, pulled yeah. away off the street. The guards are now swarming. People are trying to be go back to their houses. People are swarming the gate out of the tri-spire, and the guards are like trying to hold them back, like calming them down. It's it's nearing a ride at this point. You guys make your way over to the edge of the sewers, begin to look around for a moment where nobody's watching, and one by one, I'll make your way down into the darkness, closing it behind you. As you all get down into the quiet of the underground, there's a moment where you can hear the distant muffling of movement action. F footsteps making their way back and forth across the alleyway. Other yells and screams, information kind of in the distance, far too far away for you to make out the details of what's being said. Yeah. As you guys are also like making, are you making your way back to, uh, oh, yeah. to okay, so you're heading back through the sewers, the direction you came. We are walking away. Being okay. aware of the rat balloon. Yeah. So, so barely sneaking away from the insanity of the district, you, you walk through the darkened sewers down the same familiar path that you walked uh, to make your way, your exit there, coming up on one of the false junctions where like the left side of it is partially collapsed, but the right side continues to where the T section is. Um, Beauregard, Caleb, and Molly and Jester, because you guys all have the higher uh, passive perceptions, you begin to notice this area where there's no water that drains down the center groove of this part, you see like spatters of liquid. Does it look dark? What is it? Well, there's no light in here currently. Oh, uh, I'm gonna dancing lights. Okay, dancing lights. Poof, 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 open up the area here as you hit the intersection. You can see it is dark and red. Blood. It is spatters yeah. of blood. And just as you glance up right there at the intersection, you see a figure, one hand against the wall, breathing heavily. You glance towards it and take a moment as you kind of the light globes are just now shifting out to light the space. You see a humanoid figure, seemingly male, in uh, an outline adorned in jet black, almost insect-like leather armor that protrudes in large sweeping hooks at the joints, the elbow joints, the shoulders. Uh, a helmet that's form-fit black leather and onyx studs wraps around their head in what looks nearly demonic, the brow plate sweeping backward into rear-facing horns. The other hand is dangling, clutching what looks to be a cannonball-sized, 12-sided dodecahedron-like shape, about that big, uh, that has a handle on each side. It's emitting a dull, undulating gray glow. Just I'll cast Armor of Agathus on myself. All right. As you cast Armor of Agathus on yourself, the figure, which you now see, is the source of the blood. It looks heavily wounded and is breathing heavily. The light's now up, its head kind of turns towards you, and you hear a voice say, Kronach, he's the legend. Does anybody here speak under I cast Comprehend oh, Language. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. Under common, under common, anyone? Under under common? Common? I cast Comprehend Language. No. Okay, as you begin, is it, um, what are the components of that one? Uh, that is uh, verbal, semantic, and material, a pinch of soot and salt, all which right. I just as you, threw out in front of All me. right, as you begin to make the incantation, the figure pulls the hand away and draws this horrible, gnarly-looking hooked blade from, from the side of the, the, the sheath and goes and rushes in towards you. Okay. And that's where we're going to pick up next oh! week. Oh! As 
trip the garden and get the thing back? Sure, if we want it. Do we want it? You oh my could, god, uh, we're gonna try and get it now. You could disguise we're yourself. We're gonna try and get it now. You could disguise okay. yourself as Crick. What if we just go try to look at the body and then we accidentally fall on one of the guards and we make him drop it and then not picks it up and runs away? I'm definitely super injured, but this sounds fun. <laughs> They're heading in the direction of the uh, the king's hall. It looks like. We could I see. run up and try to look at the body. Okay, like, yeah. so you move weave into the crowd yeah. and. No, you push up and look, and the, the, the body has deep lacerations all through the torso and back. Looks like they just, they cut him until they were sure he was dead. They're they're in like an alleyway? Uh, they're heading kind of down the street right now. They're turning the corner, heading down to the can main Can I trip and fall right in front of the guard Are that's carrying the thing? <laughs> you can if you want to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to right right to right 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 self and start. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna cast this guy's sense. self as a crown's guard and just follow what follow. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna happening. parkour elf get on the or elf monk get on the roof of the nearest building. Okay, uh, make an acrobatics check. And, and you see how fast you can get up there. Oh my god! Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. And make a stealth check, please. Yeah, but then now they want it. I want it back because it hums. Natural twenty. Whoa. All right. As you dart off into the rooftop like Batman, you just vanish amongst the the night sky. Um, all right, and, and you. I'm well. tripping and falling in front of the guard carrying the thing as I'm trying to look at the body. Okay, make a deception check. I'm casting Mage Hand just in case. <laughs> God damn! Why a deception? I'm just falling. Oh, this is as you fall and forward, like oh, I make a scene. Yeah. This is just to see how. Oh well, I rolled a five. Okay. So the guy's as you fall in front of him, he's kind of like, please. Uh, miss, move away, and two of the guards kind of rush forward and start picking you up and shoving you off to the side. Oh man, I want to trip him. Where's not? Where are you? I'm just following behind, behind, behind Jester by thirty feet or so. People, like more people are coming out now and kind of gathering the crowd around to see them pull this like dead Craig through the street. Um, words getting around, and it's just people are as, are. as they try to pull me away, I'm gonna just try to hook my foot around the ankle of the guard carrying the thing, and <laughs> oh. as I'm standing oh up, God. try to trip him to the ground. Okay, I will say, uh, make a dexterity check, if you don't mind. You barely managed to, your foot doesn't quite reach, but your tail does, <laughs> as it scoops around his ankle, <laughs> he falls back and lands. Don't drop it, don't drop it! <laughs> and you are disguised I, as, as a crown's guard. guard. I was walking alongside. Okay, <laughs> okay! Come on, come on, come on! Okay, and you catch it. The guy starts getting back up. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That hurt my tail so much. I'm so sorry. He grabs Are you, you okay? by the front of your armor and just goes, You huh? need to get out of our way. I'm Walking sorry, away. it just looked so int. I'm really impressed with how well you took down that guy, though. I follow Caleb as he traces around, but on the roof. Okay. I try that, Caleb. I kind of push goes, Standing with Ford in shock and horror. Yeah. And starts, starts, cool get on. starts looking around oh, the I ground. I doing that thing where I, I was taking steps but not walking with them, and then I started walking backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, roll a stealth I'm, check because you're holding a glowing, just, undulating we're, we're device. Like, it's just, glow. It's white it's, and it's, it's like a deep I'm gray. Kind of conversation. Yeah. Oh, come on. What good. changed? That's good. Pretty That's good. good. Pretty good for me. That's 14. 14? Yeah. Dressed as a crown's god. Okay. I uh, I oh. crouch down into like on the roof above Caleb and I go. <laughs> may I? Uh, you may. Hunter's mark. Should I do Seeing smoke? Caleb walk away with the object, I'm going to cast silent image, and make uh, the image the image of the object glowing about thirty feet away from them, just on the ground. So there's, there's two of them currently. A, a, yeah, I one on right. my hand and one on the ground. Yeah. All right. Uh, but I've got it like this. What's your spell DC? <laughs> okay, I will say that that the two guards that noticed you leave with the object, mm. um, even though they're like, they're just coming over to be like, uh, wait, wait, and they see the other object over there, and they both kind of get confused, look at the two, and as they're kind of standing, trying to figure out what to do, they both split. One goes for the object over there, one goes for Caleb. Okay. okay. And he's catching up down. to you and goes like, hey, hey, we're going to the, we're going to the Hall of the King. I just want to get it away from the crowd. This thing seems dangerous to me. Right, right, well. Uh, come on. Okay. And the two of you kind of turn around. He kind of guides you to turn around. You're now walking, trailing behind. Yeah, let's just a little further back, like another 10 feet. I don't know if this is going to blow. It's better that it's just you right. and me. Some other townsfolk are starting to like walk up to, to get a look at this object now that the Crown's Guard are holding. So what's around? So you're you're yes. off, you're, you're behind the group, which the cluster, large cluster is moving maybe about 60, 70 feet ahead of you now. Um, you are back when it was turning onto the main the main street is where all this kind of transpired. Mm -hmm. So you're a little bit off 
past the corner of where they are. They're just starting to curve out of sight. Um, and you are walking with the guard now in that direction, kind of slowing down. The other object that you caused the illusion of is the other way, and the guard has about 100 feet or so to walk to get to it. Um, and he's about partway there, and he hasn't quite learned what the scenario is. Yeah, good. So I cast friends on this crown scout. Okay. Yeah. Listen, don't die for this. I will take this. Just walk ahead. This thing blew a hole in the side of that tower. Make a make a deception check yeah. come on, with Caleb, advantage. Come on, Caleb. This is a one. As soon as you say that, oh, okay. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Thank God for friends. <laughs> as soon as you say that, blew the hole in the tower. You watch him kind of take an instinctual step back. Uh, right, right. Um, I'll go catch him. Yeah. Just I mean, we've seen bulls of fire take out half a city block. So. Right, right. And he just kind of darts ahead, kind of looking over his shoulder as he as he gets and starts to try and join up with the crowd. Um, I turn into an alley. Okay. Oh, you can turn into an alley. <laughs> <laughs> Make another stealth check because there's other there's other folk now that are coming out and are seeing this going thing. The other guard has just now got up to the illusion. Oh, wait, are there other guards around me? I'm sorry. No, no, no. There's the other guard that was paired with him that went off to go after the illusion that not him created. Molly and, I, avoid the Molly and I are running after Caleb since we saw the other guard. Yeah, okay. in, and as soon as the guard gets close, I'll, I'll make it slowly rise up into the sky, just like 12, 13 feet up. <laughs> Does that give me advantage? <laughs> What's, what, what, what spell is this? Is this the, is silent image. I can right, move can it. Move I it, just yeah. can't make it make a sound. Yeah, so as it drifts up in the air, the guard <laughs> goes, uh-huh. <laughs> looks around. All the, t- all the, the, the About 17 or so townsfolk have begun to converge to look up at it, and they're like, oh. <gasps> they're all just excited <laughs> looking at it. Um, it's definitely distracting the current. <laughs> uh-huh. And the one guard there is like, go back. To everybody, he's he's starting to look nervous because he doesn't know why it's lifting up and he is uncertain about what's happening. Um, nice. you uh make a stealth check, you're only getting it because they're distracted by that on, to try and duck into the alley unseen. So you duck into the alleyway. Um, not sure if you've been seen. All right, well, the rest of you guys are doing Molly what? and I are trucking after where Caleb just ducked in. I'm walking at a very gentle pace in the I'm direction. just okay. on the roof's been tracking Caleb this whole time. Okay. And this glowing... Can we put, yeah. put it in the bag? Ordinarily, I would say yes, and I, I might want to put something else in there, but for the time being, I don't understand this thing I enough. <laughs> Let's table that for now. <laughs> I'm worried what will happen if this specifically mm-hmm. goes into that bag. Why? Because that is an extra dimensional pocket. Yes. And I don't know what this is, and I am worried that it could potentially create... A black hole and suck us all in? Uh, sure, let's go with that. Mm-hmm. But uh, maybe if we could procure a lead box to put this inside of, that will shield it from any uh, possible searching that could happen for it. A lead box? A large lead box, yeah. I don't think we should go back to the song and supper. I have a hooded lantern. We can put it in the meantime. <clears throat> we don't. I mean, have just it's sack that is fine so for it's now. It's, it's got two handles on each side, That's so true. it's. it's need, it looks like you're carrying a lantern. Okay. We need to find Dolan fast. We need to. I'm serious. Find a lead box to put this thing in because it is. Someone's going to want this very badly. Let's split the party. It's always the best idea. <laughs> no, but seriously, we don't need everyone for both. Ford and I found uh, an additional seller. Illusion shit. Have I have I finished that? All right. So as as you're <laughs> oh. at this point now, the, the guard who's down below it has called over like four other guards, and they're all at the bottom of it. And some of them have like they're getting their crossbows ready to shoot if it does I'll, something. I'll make it sort of uh, in, inflate, and then sort of Salvador Dali start dripping. <laughs> Like, As it swells and it begins to drip. They all start backing away. The guards start pushing people away. Some of the some of the the guy that was originally carrying it, with seven other guards, begins to approach the cluster. They have broken off from the procession with the uh, the, the elf body, and they've now joined up with the other guards. He's like, "There it is! Oh, stay back! Stay back!" And they're all just nervously waiting for this thing and dripping and doing nothing, and they're all scared. It's gonna start to boil and, and fizzle into yeah. into into steam and just kind of dissipate. <laughs> <laughs> it does. And it, there's, there's a brief moment as everyone kind of holds their breath, Tinkerbell. and you hear a couple of a couple of a couple of local townsfolk just go. <laughs> the guards all look at each other very confused and like. Thank you for joining us for Phantasma. The park is now closed. I wish I could be a fly on the wall when those wizards hear this story from the crowds. Go just like. 
I don't know, it just flew in the air, grew big, and then made sauce and disappeared. <laughs> Sierra guys require, or can you leave me okay, to my uh, my reading? What what's your reading? All right, so it's Shadow a breaths. it's a collection of crazy tales about this weird fella. <laughs> what guy? Uh, it's uh, the daring trials and tribulations of Sir Darian oh! Darrington. <laughs> this guy's been all over the place. It's kind of wild. Wow. Fiction or. Oh, it's got to be fiction, I mean, <laughs> but it's good fiction. Well, sum it up for me, you know, give me the, give me like the, the tensor's floating no, disc no. pitch. No, or like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh my god. What? It... Let me finish my book before I tell you too much about it, but, uh, right. no needless to say, no he's spoilers. got a, he's got this, Wild kind of construct-looking friend called Daddy, <laughs> um, and he's uh, apparently, according to this thing, there's these powerful folks from over there in Taldore that he's been meeting up with that I just keep messing up every time they go on an adventure. <laughs> Real thorns in his side. <laughs> we can relate. So, first hit. You guys watch as Lorenzo oh takes, oh, as Molly falls so back and unconscious. Real bad. Lorenzo looks confused. Uh, his vision still kind of obscured with the blindness. Am I flanking Molly? Am yeah. I going to be flanking? Yeah. Oh, I should. Well, you're not flanking. You're not flanking because you're at an angle. You're on the horse. Right. Technically. So no. So the first strike slams down into Molly's chest, the glaive, the blade actually sinking about seven inches into the chest. Blood spatters out of your mouth. You can use your reaction to make an attack if you I, like. I can't, as Sentinel, Because as right? Sentinel, you can, yes. Okay. Thank you. Do it. This is so- 14. 14 does not hit, so- Fuck! Fuck. Lorenzo looks back over towards Keg. This is bad. Looks up at, at you, Bo, and says, "An example it is, Molly. In the brief moments of consciousness, oh, fuck. what do you want to be your last words?" Oh no! But can I say wait? No. He's in it. It's done. This is done. Do you get a reaction? Do you have anything? Maybe I can talk to him. Molly. Mm -hmm. You have a brief moment as, as the consciousness in life leaves you. What are your last words? <laughs> With blood. Oh, God. As it kind of slams into his face. Respect. <laughs> and then twists the blade. The life leaves Molly. I was never shut. me running it worked <laughs> and I just watch it leave my finger and take an impossible spiraling trajectory through the air and he's so preoccupied with that that charming dwarf woman with the stubble and it takes him in the back of the head and it just starts to burn through the back of his skull and eat away through the back of his head and burn through his eyes You watch as Lorenzo, in desperation, begins to take flight 
Both you and Bo try and swing for his form, but it doesn't matter at this point. As he attempts to try and make for an exit, the flames curl across the body, leaving ash dissipating as the outer sides of his form begin to just fall away into dust and blackened shale. As both of your weapons and fists swing upward, they hit what feels like rock and scatter it like ash against both sides of the walls. The torso falls and tumbles to the ground, one arm still (coughs) dragging Lorenzo towards the stairs in this last minute bit of desperation. Before it tumbles onto its back, the flame curling and burning away the rest of his face and jaw. The hand left there limp before that eventually is taken too, leaving nothing but charred charcoal behind. You shouldn't have killed my cat. (laughs) You're quite the gentleman. He's actually not the gentleman. We met a guy who goes by the name no, Gentleman. Uh, 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 oh, gentleman. she's like, oh, yeah. okay, got yeah. I don't know who knows who. He's blue as well, and he's always sweaty. Yeah. Dark hair. He's wet. Yeah. He's a wet, he's wet always walker. He's really wet. A wet walker. Yes, I, I, I know of him. Oh. You know of the gentleman? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Because we're not cool with him so, so much. Well, I know of a man of you describe, of bluish skin and quite sweaty, yes, he has come through before. Was he nice, or was he not nice? He was very nice. He was very dashing. Yeah? I've told you about him before. What? What? Wait a minute. But not the gentleman, though. I don't don't know the name of the gentleman, but... Yeah. He has dark hair, he has got, like, black hair that's really long. And blue skin. <clears throat> oh my god, your mother knows the gentleman. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, it goes a no. little deeper than that, do you see? Right? Like cold stuff? Right? Can you do that? Tell me more of this this gentleman, please. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, he lives in Zadash, and he lives in a bar, and he's got long black hair, and he's really like, mmm, kind of charming, sort of, but kind of snarky at the same time. Well dressed, smooth voice, little no, 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 no. patch of dark hair on the Sipping chest, right? The 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 leaky nip. The tip will nip. Wait, yeah. Leaky tap. Leaky tap. Not the leaky nip. That's a very very different. Wait, I better leave my name of it. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Name of the nurse. Dash evening nip. No, no, no. That's the evening nip. Evening nip. Yes. Yes, the evening nip. Okay, we're fighting all over tavern. Oh my god, we're freaking out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can, we may provide. We have nothing to offer, but I we don't... can provide many gifts. I uh, yes. I but know. He has a barkeep man named Five Bits. I'd like a drink. I have he no He knows point. a guy around here too named Father Pierce. <gasps> I I I don't know about anything in that regard, but he wasn't named the gentleman when I met him. What what oh. was he named? I never asked. I have a vial of his spit. <laughs> Can you analyze it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What what is this fuck? Is she kind of smirks a bit and says, "Oh, honey." <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. He did wear lots of rings on his fingers. <gasps> we had a bit of a a romance years ago. How many years ago, by the way? <laughs> I told you about Babanon. 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 I didn't ask him to do his name, though. Babanon. Your dad's name is Bob. <laughs> you say he's in Zadash now. But yeah, you said he lives. 
lived in the ocean. That's what they told me. The song. The song. Oh my god. What if the gentleman is my dad? Wait, what? Are we saying if or are we saying is? Well, we don't know for sure. I mean, your mother might know. Do you for have sure. a, a picture of him? No. Do you no. have a drawing of him? I don't know. You, you draw the gentleman. Draw you probably got drawings of him in your book. <laughs> This is the perfect time for a game of Pictionary. I'm so excited. I will ask both of you, both of you, don't look. Oh, yeah. You draw one, and she draws one. Oh, and she draws one. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Please no. I'd like to think the party is legitimately this excited. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh very much. Yeah. Well, and you, no. and you, and you, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> this is the best episode of Mari ever. She's not a good artist either. She's like. Does it look like the same person when we look at the two drawings? Uh, you can you can make a connection. Okay. So is it the same person? We need to know that. Jester found his way. Um, along the way, the insects are getting really obnoxious. Um, the the buzzing itself becoming this kind of low droning, uh, ever present hum, but the bites are getting extremely obnoxious. Trimetti, one you know, acknowledging once he starts seeing it more and more, and goes. Uh, I did not find them a problem before. Uh, perhaps they seem to enjoy your flavors more than mine. Um, Very tasty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, are, like, are the insects really not bothering him at all, or? Uh, they're not bothering him really. It seems. Just out of idle curiosity. Mm -hmm. Is he a human? He's human. Um, I'm going to just Ball very quickly sucks. cast Eyes of the Grave. Eyes of the what? Grave. So anything undead within 60 feet uh, is going to glow in my, I'm going to get a little glow off anything that registers as undead. Okay. What the fuck? Okay. Um, Beauregard starts glowing. You... <laughs> twist! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you get a very, very faint what? undead aura emanating from uh, Gemetti. <gasps> <laughs> really? <gasps> Out of the fucking blue! He's cool. good. Do you share this knowledge with anyone? Not, I mean, at some point when I Big can get, get, <laughs> <laughs> I can get to, get to Ford. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crawl up to Ford in the, in the line at some point. Okay. Uh, been keeping my eye out. Uh, getting a lay of the land. Uh, and uh, uh, Gemetti uh, is not quite alive. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say not quite? She is up alive. It's not quite alive. Am I still close enough to where I can overhear this? No. <laughs> Just keep that. <laughs> I don't think it's an appropriate moment to bring something like that up, but it's worth Do, worth you, do you detect anything? Sinister? Uh, yeah, it's not quite alive. I mean, that's right. Yeah, that's inherent. inherent. And, sure, my, it's right. Stupid anything, I feel like I'm, I'm exercising an enormous amount of willpower, just not dealing. with I mean, it just doesn't seem like we're in. There's a good advantage to dealing with this now, but uh, yeah, there's something weird there. Thank you for letting me know. I hope you'll keep an eye on him for us. Oh, I'll be keeping an eye on him for you. Yeah. All right. Jamedi? Uh, Jamedi, you do not see. Oh, I need to walk up and learn more about this dance then. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to stop you because I, I see what you're doing. You're probably not going to get anything off him, but he's got an undead vibe that I've been picking up. Oh. <laughs> you understand? Okay. I mean, if I, I'm. I feel you. It's it's been making me pretty creeped out, to be honest. But I'm trying to hold together, keep chill, chill, lots of chill. It's hot, but still want to see what he's carrying. You're really gonna let me know what you see, and we'll compare notes later. <laughs> I, and I lean in way into Knot's ear and say, "Oh, by the way, Caduceus says that Jamedi is actually a dead thing." <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> no, but what? 
<laughs> Shit! <laughs> Why are we following him then? <laughs> well, yeah, I lean in and I say, are we whispering now? Are we whispering again? No, they're gone! Whispering. No, we're yes. whispering! Telling not that Jamedi is a dead thing. Caduceus says Jamedi is dead. What? He's dead? Keep it on the D D L. The what? dead low? Why are we following him? <laughs> Just because he's dead choice. doesn't mean he's a bad guy. You're whispering to him. Yes, of course I am. We don't have a choice. What if he was, if he came here, was killed, and was sent to come get us to bring us back as, as feeding for whatever's down there. What if we let the, the pirate queen tie rocks to our feet and we're dead? We just have to do this. We can kill them later. Agreed. Agreed. Oh, oh shit, you're still here? <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't left yet. I was curious to see your Did pattern. Did you know? Where are you? <laughs> you, don't, you don't see it. The voice is just are coming you? from nowhere. <laughs> is too many here? Uh, make a perception check. Uh, 18. Uh, looking around, you do not see Jermetti immediately in the vicinity. Is he on speakerphone? <laughs> Avantika! Yeah. No, this is Avantika. Avantika! Right! Yeah. Did you know he was dead? This is, we were specifically was not telling you because I knew you were going to panic. <laughs> Did you know he was a dead guy? I was not aware, but now I am very curious as to oh, where you found this information and what you think this means. I just know things. I don't know what it means. I was trying to find a moment to figure out if you knew or if we should tell you or if this was part of some sort of plan. I just uh, hadn't figured it out and for some reason I had uh, not realized that I was walking around with a bunch of gossips. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's what I get, I suppose, for trying to be sneaky about things. Nice yeah, job, guys. Nice job. <laughs> He's gonna fucking leave again. Good Who's, job. Whose side are you on? I very, I, <laughs> I've been doing my best not to uh, be thrown by it. Uh, he seems right. like he's been standing up all right. He's done work for me before and was successful. Uh, he's he pretty has, cool. Yeah. Wait, why would you? Why has he always you? been dead? Is this a recent thing? Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. But nevertheless, he has done his job so far. I assume we just keep a close eye if ever he decides to uh, give any sign of turning on any of us. Well, it's eight against one. Indeed. I'll take out several feet of rope from the bag of holding and say, we should do this before he achieves the destination for it. See you on the other side, and you watch as the dust kind of the footprints. This is why I, <laughs> why I was trying to keep it on the down low. Why? It's a new certain members of the party may get a little excited. I myself had a moment of panic. I had a moment of panic myself. But I've been keeping it contained. Do you feel okay now? No, there's a dead guy walking around. <laughs> <laughs> That's unsettling. That's like unsettling to my very core. I gotta admit, but... Oh. But, you know. Well? Has anybody else seen anything of, of particular interest? Last night. And by the way, uh, Caduceus, I heard that you were uh, very helpful in helping our compatriots with their wounds. Yeah, it was no problem. I appreciate you being a team player. Well, it looked, uh, that leg was pretty rough. <laughs> Is this a, a frequent occurrence when you're in dark tow, this sort of... Uh... <laughs> Certainly not. Uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, whoever did this does not understand the rules of the city very well. I can, uh, no, I can find creatures, I can't find objects. Mm. Vera? And Vera's kind of sitting back there and nods, and like, see your fingers kind of trace this weird symbol in the air that leaves like a slight trace, and her eyes kind of flare for a second, and she goes, but that is okay, because I can. I take a bit of phosphorus and squelch it through my hand and cast Wall of Fire across the entire length oh. of the boat oh, between yes. them and us. That's what we're going to pick up next <laughs> week. She can't see in here, I think. She cannot see. But what she can do is control water. Oh! Mm -hmm. 
So, seeing these flames happen, she pulls back, closes her eyes for a second, and raises her scarred hand with the sphere that she unlocked Ukotoa with, raised up. At that point, you watch as the water from the ocean begins to rise up. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh God! It's, it's a four. It's a fourth level spell. Oh, so I need you to roll. I know. Oh, and it's a disadvantage. Disadvantage. <gasps> where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I rolled a fourteen and a nineteen. She fails. <laughs> she does. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm going to die tonight. Oh, oh, two weeks so of tension so being released. <laughs> 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 Orgasm is all under the table right now. <laughs> Holy shit! So you watch as the ocean begins to swell upwards. Abantika raises her arm, <laughs> but you see the wall. The, fla- the the walls are opaque. Can you see through the walls? Can I hear her go shab nam yum nam nam? Uh, make a perception check. Oh. Yeah, it, it doesn't require you to. to it doesn't require you to have seen the person. You know the spell's happening. You know the direction of the person. You roll the high enough perception. <laughs> So as you hear her chanting beneath her breath and you hear the wave rising, you glance over in the direction and you, having an instinctual affinity with flames and fire, can just barely see the darkened shape of her on the opposite side of the flames being warped by the light. Using that moment, you put your hand forward and release the destructive pattern of your counter spell. And with that, the swelling ocean splatters back down to the surface. Now you can die happy. <laughs> as, as that ha- so, it's the woman of the hour. What have you to say about yourself and these uh, strangers that come waltzing into our little haven and causing all sorts of ruckus, murdering your crew and making these claims against you? Known you for years. And Avantika, hand behind in shackles, goes, well, you can see her her face, though you can see the bits where like dirt, sweat lines have made their way across and down her uh, the sides of her chin and jaw, looking intently at the rest of you with a with a forced smile through her teeth. There is a look of murderous rage and loss in her eyes as you have murdered a majority of her crew. She goes, "Well, um." I can guarantee that I kept no journal. They came to me at sea with discussion of perhaps coming and joining my crew looking for means of aid and gold. And they began to talk of this strange entity, this Ukatoa. Well, I, uh, I followed suit. I um, wanted to make for some kind of alliance. I kind of found particular interest with one of their individuals, and she looks over towards Ford. But it seems such a romance was merely just another way to try and toss me to the proverbial wolves, or um, marrow, if it will. They've now killed my crew, they've taken a number of my things, damaged my ship, and they're trying to smear my name, one who has walked alongside you and all of you fine, fine folks for the past 10 years, even using the memory of Vandrin against me. You hear a few voices go like, Vandrin, Vandrin. (laughs) Vandrin raised this one, and he sabotaged his ship, blew it asunder in the middle of the ocean, and that was the last he was seen. He's already killed one of our own. Is this untrue? Uh, uh, is she talking to me? Yeah. Uh, From the crowd, I'm gonna go, she's lying, we all, we always knew she was, she had it in for, she had it in for shh. Like, all eyes are on you. Like, King, if I may, my ears, though pointy, can only stand a certain amount of dishonesty. I would prefer to cut through the bull. There are those of us among us who can make sure that the truth is spoken here. I would beg of you to allow that to happen now. Make a persuasion check. Natural 20. (laughs) (laughs) What? 
open. <laughs> the plank king gives you this very severe look, his eyes narrowed and glancing you up and down, almost piercing you with but a glance. And he raises his head with a grin and goes, Oh, what's necessary for such a thing? Who has it yet? I do, and Jester does. You do? Yeah, it takes me literally punching the shit out of Avantika, though. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable plain king. <clears throat> The means justify the ends. My compatriot here will place her cobalt knuckles upon the chin of Avantika, and you will hear the truth. You need but only ask your questions again. Be my guest. Avantika is. What is this? Uh... Before she. <laughs> She's manticled and being held by two guards from behind. Wow. It's auto hit. Holy shit. So Go for the, it's yeah. a wisdom save. Oh, no. <gasps> That's a natural, a natural eight. <laughs> natural this eight plus four, 12. For no 12. This is 12. a lot. <laughs> yeah. So all these different hits and pressure points are hit, like under the under the chin, uh, that area, another to the sternum, and then another that clocks the temple, and Avanti just, oh, they are unable to speak a deliberate lie for one minute, and all charisma checks have advantage. And intimidation checks? Charisma. Oh, charisma checks, yeah, persuasion, everything else, that's right, yeah. Minagata. Make sure you just tell the plant king it's a limited time engagement. Okay, so it's like, she's like, oh, God. Yeah, I'm 60 seconds, but I have more knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> the plant king steps forward. I want to go. Is what they're saying true? And she goes, glances aside, doesn't respond. <gasps> he leans forward closer. You can speak a lie. You know, Tell me, is what they're saying true? Is that book containing passages? Were you looking to take this island for yourself? Look away. She just looks down at the rest of the dock. He leans in real close, pushing his forehead almost to hers. Look me in the eye, woman. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and she just doesn't meet his gaze. By the power of the rivalry that surrounds me. <laughs> Let this be a lesson to those who would work against the words we swore to each other okay. on this land. And may your memory be besmirched for the few days it's recalled. And he reaches forward and grabs Avantika by the throat and lifts her up and she's like fighting against the just kind of lifts her and looks her. I hope you see God, uh, whatever it is, is very merciful on the other side. Oh! It just breaks her neck with one hand. Her body goes limp in his grasp and he throws it to the docks. Don't worry about the cipher. And Solomon goes, I, I, it's actually quite interesting. I could, I'd like to continue. Yeah, and also Fine. I, I, Goes by Twiggy, you're up. Am I, or is it the elemental? Who goes first? You go first. I go elemental. first. All right. Come on, Twiggy. I'm gonna come out of hiding. I'm gonna fire an yeah, arrow man. with advantage. <laughs> yeah. Last uh, man standing, Twiggy. Natural twenty. <laughs> Roll damage. Oh. Roll damage. Yes. Roll damage. <laughs> we'll we'll so see if it's enough. Two thirty-eight. How do you want it? Um, I step out and I and I I put on my meanest face that I learned from Sir Cadigan and still in the form. Or still as Halas, hundred percent as Halas. And I say, <clears throat> um, 
and I say, this is for my my only friends. Um, come straight forward and 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 um, yeah, I want to hit him like in the heart because yes. he he broke my heart. Oh, bud. <laughs> It stumbles forward towards you now that you're visible. Its eyes kind of blinking in and out, looking confused, still with the shape in those. Now I drop it. <sighs> and falls to the ground and collapses, exhaling bits of energy arc out of its snout and dissipating the stone around there. Uh, hello, can I help you? Edith, it's me. Where's my son? Uh, I thought you were dead. I'm not. Let me see him right now. My, my goodness. Um, Luke? Luke? And uh, the, you'd see what looks to be a, a small halfling boy, and maybe more than five years old, kind of peek around the doorway. Shaggy, light brown hair, blue eyes. Yeah. Hi. Daddy said the goblins killed you. No, they didn't. I'll pull out the doll of King Bertrand and, and give it to him. Give it to him. I brought you that. And, and and other toys. How are you? Are you okay? Did they hurt you? He says daddy went away to help the war, but I think she's lying. He's probably dead too, like I thought you were. No, 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 he's alive. I know he is. Did they touch you? No. Daddy locks me away when the mean lady comes by. The, the mean lady? What does she look like? Who is she? What? Oh my gosh, it's, it's so wonderful to see you. I just pick, pick him up and give him a big hug and a he, kiss. He kind of just stiffens up. He's overwhelmed and um, untrusting of the scenario, but, but you still pick him up. Mean lady with the pointy ears. Yes. Yes, she comes often. Hmm. And and you you go somewhere safe when she comes. Daddy would put me in my room. What about the last time? Um, it was the night when all the loud noises happened. Yes. Daddy just pushed me out of the house and said, go, so I ran to Edith. Everything was on fire. You're very smart. You're very smart. You've always been a very smart boy. You're a good boy. Good job. Stay safe. When you were running away, did, did you see anything of Dad? No. I mean, it's just a letter. Scary people in armor. I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry I wasn't there to protect you. And I... Mommy, where... Where were you? I was, uh... I was far away. I was trying... I was trying to get back. I was, I was trying to come back. I was. I was trying so hard, but I, I don't, I don't have, I'm not strong enough to come back yet. Uh, but just know that I'm always thinking of you. That's, I'm, I send you, I send you things so you rem remember me and, and I hope dad gives them to you. I mean, get presence, but he just says they're from somebody. Oh. 
Well, that's fine. Yeah, it would be hard to understand. But I love you so much, and I've, I've never stopped thinking about you and trying to come home. I didn't want to go away. And I'm going to find your father. I, I will. And, and then maybe we can be a family again. M maybe. But I will find him, I promise you, all right? You just have to be that smart boy that I know and just stay safe, all right? Is Daddy alive? In my heart, I think he is. And you're alive again? I will be too. And don't die. He just turns around and walks back into the house. You got this, man. Your name is... Veth. It was... My name was... Bren. Aldrich... Elmandrud. And uh, that's why you looked at me that day. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, how would I like to do this? It's an explosive arrow. <gasps> okay. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Oh no! So, oh no! As you Wait, you as you see it rush fire? past a friend, you fire, and the bolt you still have a strikes level? towards it and yeah, third level. detonates. Oh, no. You watch as portions of the incubus are scattered across the ceiling, the walls, the floors. I celebrate. Dripping down, you suddenly like yeah, and all you see is like the body of Caduceus, which is thrown about five or six feet from the explosion, land on the ground, charred and dead. Mm -hmm. No! <laughs> I run forward. Okay. And I cast Revivify. You still have a, th I have third a third level, level left, because oh, I have my third God. fucking you power. Fuck okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, so combat's over. You go ahead and you, you pull out the diamond that you thankfully Got back. Back. Thankfully, that, that ogre didn't win that fight, oh my <laughs> or anybody God. else. Thanks, Darren. Is this a is this a thing she has to roll for? No, it's so Revivify fast. It's no. within no, yeah. it's within one minute. One so, minute. as you see, <laughs> Caduceus burned, eyes partially open, the breath, the final breath escaped the body, kind of onto the stone. You rush forward, pull up the diamond. Traveler, tell the wild mother that uh, that Caduceus needs help. And I place the diamond on his chest, and I cast Revivify. Okay. As you cast the spell, the diamond shatters in place into thousands of tiny, sparkling, glittering beads of light. They all kind of stop in place and float above him. As your hand's out in front, you see a second hand appear, spectral, green. And you see a cloaked arm around it as the Traveler's hand is with you. And he pushes your hand forward into this series of sparkles, and it's warm to the touch, and you watch as they all gather around your hand. And for just an instant, for just an instant, you feel this, this, this presence, and you swear amongst the, the shadows, for a split second you can see what looks to be this heavy, tumbling hair and a matronly smile in the shadow above, but you blink and it's gone. And as you look down, the energy that's around your hand drifts into Caduceus's chest. You see all the sparkling bits of light kind of all going out, hundreds at a time, before all of them have transitioned into his body. And there's a pause. And the voice in your ear, the familiar voice says, I'm proud of you. <gasps> <laughs> 
Hey. Am I even that one hit point? Mm -hmm. You're one hit point. Oh. Ah. That's nice. Guys, is it over? <laughs> oh, that doesn't feel good. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, I had the weirdest dream. Oh. Oh, that's stiff. You'll never believe what I saw. What did you see? I saw your wild mother. She was looking over at you and smiling. Oh, that's... that's I, I'm gonna sleep. That's good. I think I'm we should sleeping. probably sleep. Yeah. He needs some that's rest, a... though. His last name is Bernato, and he's a, a scientist, a chemist. We believe that he has uh, done some experiments which have wreaked havoc uh, in uh, other parts of the world and uh, caused people great suffering. And as part of our mission, we are to find out what he knows and possibly use his information to yes. heal some of the people who were affected by his experiments. We were asked to find him and return him so that he may be punished by the people there, but we know he is in your custody, so <clears throat> we understand that that's not possible. I would like both of you to make deception checks, please. That's really surprising. Uh, that's a one, so I'll use this. <laughs> Change that timeline. Way better. <laughs> Still not great with my negative three. My nine for me! Was it? Nine. Nine. Ten. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to let you talk. It's your thing, but <laughs> shit. Deception plus eight. Okay. Okay, a couple things. <laughs> we are instantly bad. <laughs> <laughs> One, the warm expression of the queen becomes less warm oh. and a bit more stone-faced. And specifically in the moment that you concentrate and utilize that fragment of possibility within you, oh. there's a there's a brief oh. Hold on. there is a there is a brief just a a, a slight head turn of acknowledgement towards you and a curious look. A, a voice comes out from the side, the left side of you, amongst the thrones, it goes, my queen, if I could speak. Who that? Who is this? Is that like you? You look to your left to find the voice and uh, Lythir is standing there. Of course. And she puts out a hand. <laughs> Lythir steps forward and goes, my eye has been caught by these travelers. For their smell is alien, their intent unclear. I myself still recover from wounds suffered along the western edges of the Ashkeeper Mountains, oh, not a week before. Oh, we fucked him up. As does my partner, a lauded Echo Knight in your service, my queen. We came upon a troop of Dwendalian scouts seeking weakness in our borders wishing subterfuge upon our brave soldiers. We did battle and slew many of their filthy ilk, but were forced to flee when the tides turned against us. When these creatures, these allies of the Empire assailed us. The air leaves the room as every member of this court kind of stands to look down upon you. The queen leans back into her gate, and her staff <laughs> hits the stone. In that silence, she looks down at you, her eyes now burning. Is this true? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, yeah, we did. We did fight uh, with some some of your soldiers upon crossing into the dynasty. Yes, but we're true. not. We're not soldiers of the. Of the Empire. My queen, clearly the gentleman is confused. We too were found in an ambush and found ourselves assaulted from both sides. Your friend over here did not seem to take any special actions to ascertain the nature of our journey. We did trade blows, although I do not recognize him from that particular encounter, but yes, this did occur. We were trying to make our way to the City of Beasts, which we successfully did. Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. Oh, oh, disadvantage, Travis Willingham! You got this one, you got this one! Oh, 
This one goes to 11. <laughs> her chin now raised. The warmth has vacated her face. The expression hard and angry. I am curious why you would walk into my sanctum. Yeah, me too. Seems real dumb right now. That's it? Have you nothing to say for yourselves? We simply seek your aid. Guards. Wait, wait. We have not been honest with you, it's true. Guards, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, what are you doing? Where are you going? He's doing a map, he's, he's doing, doing a map. map. The guards immediately start approaching. Are you guys fighting? Or are you so? No, wait, no. wait. Throw up our hands. The throw up our hands, yeah. All right, you're surrendering. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What are we gonna do, fight you guys? You guys are super powerful. Okay. We don't work for the Empire, please. The guards all <laughs> stepping up to the sides. Here behind. And here. Oh God. And here. Oh God. What should we do? And even more. Like say something. Begin to arrive up. We have to tell her the, the truth. Tell her, tell her the truth. Yes, yes. Just she, tell her. She turns and sits back down on the throne. Everyone else begins to sit down. They've. They seem to have lost attention on you in the moment, and the guards begin to rush forward and just grab you at the shoulders. They grab Caleb. I am sorry. We are sorry. We have come to bring you something. We have come to bring you something. We have come a long way. No, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Just get arrested, man. Just get arrested. You should do it. They've pushed Caduceus onto the ground. Um, Yasha is currently being put into shackles. Please, please spare us. He's my he's my husband. You, you have my husband. You're hold you're holding my husband. There's no there's no attention being paid. The Empire is working against you. Wild Mount is working against you. And we have brought the proof. If you will allow me to show it to you. The uh, Zythir across the me goes, what proof? I need to approach my friend. I mean no harm. I need to remove something from. Make a persuasion check. Oh boy. Oh boy, this went perfectly in my head. You have a moment. Anything strange and I take off your head. Chester, I am coming to you, okay? I am just going to open this bag. Careful, as you reach for it, in there. You, you hear the sound of many blades being drawn as you reach for the bag. <laughs> Echoing through the immense chamber, the bright light bearing down on top of you. You can feel the sweat beads forming and dripping down your forehead and gathering in your brow. I say this as a child of the Empire. Connected to inner circles there, long ago. And I reach in and grab the dodecahedron. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh God. And lift it into the air. I thought you were gonna get out the tripod first. <laughs> no, go big or go home. Okay. Um, the minute you pull, the dodecahedron out. You hear the clattering of metal. Ting, 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 ting. <gasps> Gasps. If you thought air was escaped from the room before, it is a vacuum now in silence. The thrum of the object in your hand, <laughs> the light pulsing like the heartbeat since the moment you found it. You see every eye upon you, and the queen, the bright queen herself, Elis Kryn, has stepped around the art object, the symbol that sits before her throne, and looks down straight into it, her eyes wide. You see tears forming at the corners of her face. I am of the Empire. 
but I am no friend to the Empire. One of your own came to retrieve this and fell. And I bring it to you. And I set it down in front of Jester, two or three feet in front of her feet, and raise my hands back into the air. Everyone is just locked in on this, and slowly they all begin to look to the Bright Queen. She holds her staff up and says, Release their bindings. One by one, you find your chains, your manacles, pulled away. The queen takes a step, then another, and another, and approaches, tall, elegant with each step. She approaches, and she's even more imposing, more beautiful and ethereal the closer she gets to you. She sets her staff aside and reaches down from the handles, picks it up. You bring us hope. And you have undone one of many great wounds against us today. I have no words. My emotions burn within my chest. If you are no friend to the Empire, you have certainly today become heroes of the dynasty. And that's where we'll end tonight's oh, episode. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm unaware of your presence. Take the sword and hold it against my chest. And I will say, you need me more than I need you. Give it back. Does anything happen? Make an intimidation check. Nothing seems to happen. I push it into my chest. Ooh. How far in? A few inches, maybe an, maybe an inch. Okay, so a few inches? Or yeah, no, let's, go, let's, let's say an inch, see okay. what happens. The pain rocks through your body, uh, and as you press in, your muscles tense around it, your chest contracts, and you feel the white, hot, sharp pain up through your body and into the base of your skull. And you press it in, you can already feel the blood beginning to trickle from the wound. I'll take one step towards the pool of magma, and I'll push it in a little further. <laughs> okay. You push in another inch or so. Uh, you... So you've taken uh, nine points of, I'll say for this piercing damage, even though it's a slashing weapon, but it's being utilized oh, yeah. in a piercing fashion. Uh, as you now step. Uh, how, how, how close are you to the lava? You're now like maybe a foot from the edge of it. Oh, Probably almost taking damage from that. Making a, make another intimidation check if you'd like. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, 13. 13. No response. No reaction. The heat is burning on the edge of your skin. Not you know, painfully so, but you definitely can feel the proximity. One more step. One more push. You are now at the, oh. the edge of it. <laughs> you push in further, okay. Oh, Jesus. Don't pass out next to the lava. Please. Okay. That is whatever uh, Nineteen points of piercing damage upon yourself. 
at this point, as you're pulling it there, how close are you standing to the edge? Are you just like outside of the wall or up against just outside of it? All right, you're standing right there. It's plunged now, it's third inch in, and the, I mean, that's fairly mm-hmm. deep into your chest, and you can already feel the worry. And Monks is your, 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 your willpower is there at the moment in the back of your mind. You're like, I'm getting close to vitals. Mm-hmm. Make another intimidation check. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. No response. I take the sword out. Okay. Hold it over the pool. All right. You withdraw, and with that, it's like a gout of your own viscera, and it splatters across the exterior of the wall, and like begins to immediately sizzle and smoke. Don't know how long I can hold this. As the blood drips on the blade into the magma, the steam and smoke that arises from the burning of your own blood across the immediate, extremely hot surface kind of sends up tufts of smoke. And the stream gets more consistent as the smoke billows more and more and more and kind of begins to fill the space around you. The dark smoke beginning to swirl around your shoulders and around the weapon until suddenly the light begins to be choked around you. The warm, bright underglow of the light in fire begins to vanish as you find yourself surrounded in this cloud of smoke born from your own burning blood. In that moment, the pain still there throbbing in your chest numbs ever so slightly. And there in the smoke around the blade, your hand shaking, still stalwart and strong, a calmness comes across you. What do you do? blade back and throw it <laughs> into the <laughs> it disappears through the smoke <laughs> you hear <laughs> the smoke dissipates in the direction of where you threw it about a moment later and there you can see it resting and slowly sinking into the molten rock. Round four, the, like the base of the legs, and then begins to pull him out with the whip taut. I need you to make a strength check. Oh no! <laughs> natural 20, natural 20, natural 20! 17. You feel the shoulder joints kind of pop pop out a little bit, but you maintain your hold, and as you're pulled out there, your entire body is on fire. I will say, because this is gonna, you take three points of stretching damage. (laughs) As your body is yanked out. It's almost like being with Avantika again. (laughs) <laughs> that finishes Jester's turn forward. Uh, yes, I still have the whip attached to its foot, right? You do. Its foot. Or whatever the fuck it has. <laughs> As an action, uh, I can uh, blah, 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 cause them to become restrained? If you'd like to. Yeah, I'd like to try and do that. Okay. So... As the, as you, you're kind of standing there holding it at bay, you invoke the whip and it pulls you a little bit forward and the claw a little bit slightly towards it. Mm-hmm. As the, uh, the whip begins to like almost extend and wrap around it, you see its body begin to be kind of rope tied along its midsection and it's pulling against it. You are magically hog tying. This creature. Hog time! <laughs> and it's going to attempt to burrow again. 
Make a strength check for me. Uh, thought its speed was zero. Hold that tiger. Huh? Thought its speed was zero. Nineteen. So, from a, <laughs> I'm considering this a contested roll because you're trying to grapple a huge creature with a 20 foot whip. So I'm considering it restrained, but I'm not considering its speed reduced to zero. I'm considering it a contested strength roll. Yeah. Uh, it rolled uh, a natural four plus seven, so it's an 11. <laughs> So it attempts to burrow and dig in, and in spite of yourself, your arms still hurt. You kind of pull back and dig your feet into the rock and lean and lean, and you can feel the tissue kind of... <laughs> you take, I'll say, 13 points of just internal damage as your arms are just tearing away from your body, but the creature does not move. Fuck. Wow, that is such a fucking cool map. That is amazing. Why did you Ooh. make that? Oh! oh no! <laughs> no! That is the biggest thing I've ever seen! <laughs> why? No. Why are we doing this? <laughs> Level nine! <laughs> because someone had a bad breakup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to Dimension Doras. But I. Uh, to? The opposite side of the dome. Okay. <laughs> you guys appear, the dome right there, and in that brief moment to be like, oh, <gasps> we made it. You watch as as Geladon leaps towards. Step into the dome. The dome, and you guys step in right as you oh watch this large ancient white dragon. <laughs> It's like scraping on and biting. It's just opening, grinding against the side. <laughs> Slamming into the side as hard as it can. So what's happening? You guys are all inside the dome. He can't. Oh, yeah. I can't hold my liquor. Inside, yeah. Oh, he's not concentration. Oh my god. <laughs> So, it'll take a full minute. All right, so Caleb begins drawing the circle across the ice. You're setting it down. You see like the dragon's like angrily roaring and slamming its claws in it. On the opposite side, you can see like a handful of yetis that apparently have come in since you last arrived are like, nope. They just turn the other way. You watch it. About 20 seconds in, Geladon's anger subsides. Megan's kind of like caged lion stalking around the inside of the circle. About 40 seconds in goes, where do you think you're going? Oh no. <sighs> 50 seconds in. We didn't want to disturb you. <laughs> For the yeah, record, we're really out, sorry. And, I, and I just throw seven platinum out the, out the, out the door. <laughs> <You're> Truth <laughs> to <laughs> We're really sorry. <laughs> Mark seven platinum off. <laughs> I know your scent now. Five seconds. Mister, uh, Mister, do you? Can, are you sure you can cast this inside this place? Ah! Unleashes a torch. You watch the ice crackle up around and form this kind of igloo dome over the outside. Right as the circle is finished, you see it. Poof, all the same runes flare. Familiar from before. You have six seconds. Get out! <laughs> You all rush in that brief moment as you feel the air pull out of your lungs and you all stumble forward, gravityless, and then land onto the, the wooden, warm floor interior of the Vellum Steeple in the middle of the corn. <laughs> Stu, I do remember that. I will uh, run in that diagonal. Uh, 5, 10, 15. 15 there. Cool, and, we, and like, I can't see the squares. Am I about 30 feet from the hand? Uh, I'd say you're about 30, 35 feet from him, yeah. Okay, if I'm 30, uh, fuck it. I'm gonna try and cast Charm Monster on the hand and the hound that is nearest to him. Ooh. Oh, interesting. Make him your friend. Okay. Come on. Charm Monster. Roll a one. Is that, Roll is that a wisdom save? Yeah. yeah 17. Roll a one. That is a, a nine, that's a failure. Yeah. <gasps> 
for the hand? For the hand. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, yeah. game changer. <laughs> game changer. Okay. Let me look at the, the specifics game here. Of... Lordy. I have to pee again. <laughs> so badly. So badly. We're not taking another break, Laura. <laughs> Casting it. Oh it's my God. This is empty. <laughs> I cast it. It lasts Sorry. for one hour. It is concentration. One hour? Game changer. Game changer. It's concentration, though, so we have to protect four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's still uh, 14. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Okay. Die. Okay. Oh my god. Oh okay. my god. I don't know what, don't know what the fear is. Uh, okay, so the creature for the next hour is charmed by you. Yes! yes! Can you Regardless, tell him to? the spell works. Yeah. Tell him to, tell him to call up his house. Yeah, I can. He, I mean, can I say, don't attack my, don't attack my friends. And call the call off your wards. All right. So as you as you stand there, putting your hands forward and say that, the, the laughing hand kind of <laughs> comes barreling up towards you. <laughs> and it's just staring right down at you. It stands at about roughly, you're guessing at this about ten to twelve feet tall. Vein, sweat drop. Uh, the the hounds which are falling run past you and then curve back around to join the hand. What? We can. This is an hour. I'm gonna For stay right here and I'm gonna turn to the group and go. You have an hour. <laughs> go. Are you not coming? Wait. Um, <laughs> you watch a uh, the figure enter uh, with a bit of a huff. Um, you see. What looks to be a a human woman, pale skin, light kind of graying blonde hair that's braided back behind her with gems kind of tied throughout each braid. Yeah. Um, uh, an intricate satchel over one shoulder and a long dark blue dress. <gasps> wait. Shut the fuck up. Wait. Wait. All right. What is that? <laughs> God for sake. Oh, wait, oh, is God, it to be about in her like mid fifties or so. Hey, out. <laughs> That's it. It's definitely her. Blue's a popular color. It might not be her. Background check on you, sir. <laughs> it might not. It might not be her. I spring from the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? <laughs> stop. Surprise attack. Uh, no. I mean, I'm just gonna watch. Okay. Watch. Suss her out. See if she's on the up and up. Hello. Um, Hey. And Hi. And you are? Uh, we are. One hand is kind of up, nervously. More friendly. We're the Mighty Nine. The Mighty Nine. Pleasure. All right. Uh, we are f- friends to you, sir. I am somewhere between a apprentice and protege to Master Yusa. Um, we've been here for a while, uh, and apparently uh, you're, uh, I'm sorry, what is your name? Uh, well, um, I'm uh, Arcanist Alorovice. Oh, my God! Let me tell you! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm Master cry. of Arcana oh. uh, of the Council of Taldore. <laughs> and uh, I would like to be notified as to why I've been summoned. I take it to your wens first and points to the goblin. You, looking over the map as you guys are pouring over it, can really see the paper there are areas in the map that the drawing and there's a lot of tapping around specific locations where it looks like a lot of intent and thought. You begin to see in your mind, like visualize him thinking and making a lot of notes around and focusing on certain areas of the map and looking at the various quill marks and the pressure put into the paper. The ones that gain the most attention are the study, oh. the, study the, okay. study, the, the study. arcane armory, and the perma heart chamber. Study. That's the fuck. Arcane what? The study. Arcane armory. Arcane mm-hmm. armory and the perma heart. And because you rolled so high an investigation check. Yes. Your brain goes perma heart, perma heart. Oh, there it is. It's a triangle up at the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perma heart, perma heart. Fastest ways to tapestry. Oh. Something about the laughing hand. <gasps> On another plane. I told you. On another plane. I fucking told you. You, you, said you fucking did. Up. You said it for all the fucking weekend. I know. That's what a natural twenty gets you. Oh, fuck it! Get to 
Dr. Mauritius Bones! She is the best detective. I'm such a good detective. Good job, Jester. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh my God. We might not be fooled. We might still have a chance to get ahead. But they are locked. I'll try to pick one. Go for it. Make a lock picking check. What is that? <laughs> what are you doing now? I'm gonna try to pick it. I don't okay. know what that means. <laughs> I write down Check, traps. <laughs> traps, bro. <laughs> What'd you roll? Uh, uh, 19. A 19. Did you start I what you were like. backing up from this. Yeah, back up. We all back up. <laughs> okay. Kale gesticulating madly, just <laughs> trying to show explosions with his hands. <laughs> okay. You d- Ting. It doesn't unlock. Oh. Um... I need you to make constitution saves. <laughs> Eight. No. Eleven. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. This is going to be like a Vexali oh. woman. Hold on a second. Oh. Oh? Can't heal you in here. Mm-mm. We can feed him a potion. Yeah. Or- no. Nope. There is, sorry, my apologies. There is no saving throw. Oh. You watch as not is working at the at the the box. There's that click sound. And there's this kind of bit of shadow that just kind of <gasps> drifts off of the body as not collapses. Exact same <laughs> shit. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> the box also? Vanishes. I drop down and start sh- gently shaking. No breath. I scoop her up and start qu- uh, quietly going back up the stairs. Yeah, we gotta okay. go back. I'll follow. Yeah, yeah. same, same. All right, you guys back into the chamber. Back so soon? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> next, next, next room. Next what room. is problems? The Spare the dying. The is she sleeping? Spare the dying. It has no effect. I mean, I don't want to it be just there. is a, it just a, it's a, stabi- it's a stability. stability. Yeah, it doesn't, there's that's nothing. If there are, that's if they're at zero hit points. Right. Oh, not, not dead. 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 Not revivify, cast to revivify. In the middle of this chamber, beyond where this the, the, the containment circle is, Three. you reach down, grasp the symbol of the traveler, and as you place the diamond onto the chest of Knot's currently lifeless body, um, you see the diamond crumple black and turn to dust. No, 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 no. As the dust kind of drifts away, you see the hand of the traveler kind of catch it in the air and then place it onto the chest of Knot's body. The hand kind of gives one hard push on Knot's chest. And in that moment, you watch Knot's body. <gasps> Come back to consciousness. Oh, man. Check for traps. That's what you were. That's what yeah. you were saying. Yeah. I didn't. It's what this, we're I don't know what. Time. Yeah. I also. Yeah. Look, we're in a terribly dangerous place. Maybe we just look for you, sir. That's fine. Yeah. Check for traps. Hold it, time. Okay. Okay. The, okay. La- the last thing you remember was like trying to unlock it, and then hearing like a word or a phrase said in your head. And you can't remember what it was. But that's the last thing you remember. On top of it. No, that's true. That's true. I'll allow it. Matt's gonna kill one of his own characters. Go on. I'm glad we shamed you into this. Say it. Yes! Say it! Say it! Say it! Say it! Say it. Say it. How do I want to do yes. this? Describe how you would like to kill yourself. <laughs> oh shit! 
as the creature itself is like pulling itself towards the doorway as everyone's trying to find its way around. You watch tendrils <laughs> pulling it and dragging its form in almost like a weird rolling ball of black inkiness. As it makes its way that direction, uh, Caduceus inside being torn by the teeth that grind, everyone else knocked unconscious in the ground, eyes rolled back, mouths open, barely breathing. Uh, you watch as the Catergeist kind of vanishes into the ground. As it pulls forward, <laughs> it explodes from the inside. Caduceus rolls out onto the ground, covered in the black ichor. And there, where it was standing, you see the Cato guys holding both blades out, had phased up into it and burst through from the inside, carving it apart into multiple places. All right, do the thing. Cups the side of her cheek. This will be our best trick yet. We have to name it. Preparing as you pull the slaves back, you take the scattered elements of the crushed gems and place them across Knot's body as you lay down into the clay. That's wet. The ritual begins as the lines begin to draw around, the incantations begin. All of you can sit back and watch as the wind begins to pick up. The temperature shifts and alters. The cold of the clay heats around your body and you feel it begin to actually move. You watch as the clay begins to slowly almost melt and reverse upward and then eventually encasing elements of Knot's body. As the magic begins to swirl and gather, minutes seem to stretch longer than you expected. It's a place where time momentarily seems to not really have an impact. Words you try and speak draw slowly. As part of this ritual, it's an encapsulation within itself, and all of you are just bystanders watching a new magic be birthed. As you progress, you reach out and extend your thoughts towards Not, and Not, you concentrate and focus on the image of who you truly are in the heart of hearts. As you feel the clay begin to cool and turn cold around you, you engage the second element of the spell. Now the woven threads of arcane power pierce the clay and pierce Knot's body to begin the process of rearrangement. The excitement begins to flow through you with the knowledge that you have the ability at your fingertips to do this. After so many times of discussing and contemplating and daydreaming, this is the moment where you are the surgeon at work and you go in for that first kind of incision. And you're blocked. And you pull. And it should be working, and you push again, and you're blocked. There's something dark, something in the way, and you don't know what it is, and it's frustrating. You shake your head and, and tense your eyes, and as you push a third time, it pushes back. All of you watch as the clay suddenly cracks, shatters across the room, sending shards everywhere. You're having to block your eyes. The window kind of blasts open a little bit. The spell itself, the ritual, the containment field of energy suddenly drops. And all you hear between the two of you as the shadow that encases not is this terrible laugh. And all that you recall is the last time you heard that laugh. That motherfucker. When you were placed beneath that water. You've sensed this before, things like this. But lying deep in the heart of Knot's form lies a curse that still holds her. Something that still grips her essence from whatever creature laid this fate upon her. And that's where we'll pick up next week. Oh, 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 if you give me your hands. Like literally like my hands? Like how will I eat? You know? Like what if it's just, you know, my ability to draw? You have friends who can feed you, right? Oh man, 
that's gonna suck real bad to not have any hands at all. Does it negate it if I go and they grow them back or something? <laughs> I think you know how intense and lasting these bargains can be. All right, I wouldn't be able to grow them back. Both of my hands. <laughs> That just seems so stupid. Oh. <laughs> she flicks a finger and you see one of the empty cages in the wall kind of about the right size for two hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to make things so difficult. No hands. <laughs> You're the one who offered it. <laughs> Individuals make it do all the wait, time. Wait, wait, what about when I cast spells? Like with my fingers? Does it just, is it like Doctor Strange where like I can still do it? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a conversation between you and whatever entity. His name is the Traveler. He's a really powerful god. I bet he's here right now looking over me. <laughs> Have we a deal? As she leans forward, seeming to consume the interior of the chamber, looming over and down upon you, the one lengthy hand reaching out like this. Well, hold on. Maybe before we make the deal, I can eat one last cupcake? You know, since I won't be able to do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to pull out my last blueberry cupcake. <laughs> Will you split this cupcake with me? Have you ever had a blueberry cupcake? I don't believe I have. See, I'm using my fingers to break it in half. <laughs> oh my god. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> 24. She reaches out and grabs the other half of the cupcake. It's so small in her long, oh. curled fingers. Kind of. That was sprinkled with the dust of deliciousness. <laughs> okay. Remind me what that is. Again. That is. A dust that makes food taste much better. <laughs> and it also gives you a disadvantage on wisdom checks and wisdom saving throws. Okay. And I'm going to cast Modify Memory. Oh my god. Hold on. Okay. Did I succeed? Yep. <gasps> what? I'm going to make her believe mm -hmm. that she enjoyed my company so very much that she agreed to end Knot's curse because she liked hanging out so much. <laughs> <laughs> and she hasn't had good company in a very long time. <laughs> Laura fucking Haley. Okay. So as you complete your incantation, the minute of describing this shift in time, you, uh... I get done with the, telling her that and I just start going, <laughs> You are 
You're so funny. <laughs> It has been quite a while <laughs> since uh, I've taken just a moment to relax. I, I know, suppose. right? Everybody needs that. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you so much. It means a lot. You caught me in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> well. Should you come across any more of those cupcakes? I will send them your way. Do not be afraid to come visit again. I will definitely do that. You know, they make some that um, are called black moss cupcakes. I will, I will let you know because, yeah. <laughs> well, the night grows late. Yeah, as it is, it's getting dark outside. Is there anything else I can help you with? Something that you've always wanted? Just your company, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Should I send my friend not um, in, or, or is it just, does it, do you need to see her? Oh, it's fine. You see the hand kind of wave past, and the shadows of the room grow extremely dark. The lantern fights to maintain a flame and then it slowly expands back out. A deal is a deal. This has been fun. <sighs> well, it's a long journey back, I guess. I guess we should head out, huh? Indeed. Thank you so much. <sighs> See you later. You sometime. Okay. <laughs> Is the door, does the door do the thing? Right. <laughs> <laughs> she seems very distracted and is trying to piece together incongruent events, but waves a hand and the door closes behind. Oh. We gotta go. You're good. Let's go. What? Let's go. Okay. Let's what go. Do you, what, what, do you, Let's what do you mean? Go. Let's get the fuck out of here. Go. I need to get the teacher. You, no, you don't. Your curse is broken. Deal has been made. Everything's fine. What did you give her? What do you mean it's been broken? I gave what her something you? very precious. Let's get the fuck out of here. Your hands are Come still on. there. I know. You know what? What did she you give her? She ended up being a really nice lady. Just, we a, got just a, a, are you sure? Everything's fine. Then let's I am go. So serious. Let's walk. Let's go. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right, yeah. well, we yep. just not. As he walks, you can see, kind of out of the corner of the green light, the vines almost expanding and growing more vibrant around him. Flowers kind of. As he steps to an area and kind of puts his hand to one side, you can see one of the trees kind of very quietly bends and moves aside, where a little corner of the jungle is kind of serene and removed from the dense expanse around you. Is this the oasis? No, this is your oasis. It's a place to talk. He stands and turns facing you. Pulls his hood back, revealing his almost elf like features, the more exaggerated and fey. His long ears curling behind the head. Beyond any elves that you've seen, his almond shaped eyes of emerald green and brilliant beneath his thin, feather like brows. A voluminous orange red hair curls down the back of the head like a lion's mane and he smiles. 
Jester, you are my first disciple. The first one to truly carve the world with your cunning, your joy, and your mischief. I trust you. And are you ready for the absolute truth? Yes. I am the traveler. But it was not always this way. For when I traveled here, it was a, a world before me where I was without burdens, without responsibilities, and without limitations. I drank deep of the muted colors of Alexandria, straining to exit. I plucked at and knotted the lives of many fools from the shadows, amusing myself by leaping into every whim with glee and purpose. And one day I met a little girl who sought that same spark. A little girl who found joy in exposing life's more subtle hypocrisies. A little blue girl who lived a life so small but felt in her heart there was so much more to see. This little girl and I found a kinship. And in that childlike wonder, a view so untempered by the sanctimonious morality of man. And she saw me as a god. So for her, for you, I don the mask of one. I found that with such pure, absolute faith granted towards me, I was exhilarated. I began to seek others who might be waiting for such guidance to bring a bit of un, well, necessary chaos into the world. One by one I traveled and found more souls who needed direction, who found themselves in our shenanigans. It was beautiful. Eons living for only myself. I, I found a new joy in helping others find themselves in a world cruel and painted in dull, divided pigments. With each new faith, I could find myself, I could feel myself becoming what you believed. Then more came. Playful pranks turned into demands. Prayers fighting for my attention. Freshly freed from previously imposed boundaries, I had managed to really construct my own. Our such faith granted me power beyond what I thought possible. To achieve, I was being spread too thin across those who I'd taken under my wing. I thought to bring them all together, to unify their causes and perhaps forge community under this banner, my banner, our banner. <gasps> well, weeks away from the gathering of my lost children who have wound their lives around my boons and counsel. The truth, Jester, is that I have no idea what I'm doing. <gasps> And I need your help. That's where it ends tonight's episode. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I rolled 16. Okay. All right. And Baboon says plus two, so just go with it, okay? <laughs> uh, the Righteous Brand, unaware, you can sense Frumpkin complete the journey beneath the gangplank onto the edge of the ship, yeah. and then grasping onto the rougher edges of the outside of the actual ship hull itself, make his way to the edge of one of the gunship portholes, slowly open it, and slip barely inside. I put my arm on Beauregard's shoulder and say, just look at the ocean, it is so beautiful. Let's take it all in. What's he saying? Can he hear anything? Okay, so as you... Don't forget that okay. I... Okay. So, I don't hear anything, so if you try to talk to me, I can't be, hear this'll you. This will be interesting. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Focusing through Frumpkin's eyes, you look into the interior of this <laughs> darkened uh, gun deck of the ship. There are two cannons within there, as opposed it looks like it was built from multiple, multiple cannons, but there's only two in there, very beautiful make. Um, and immediately, just at a glance, you can see these are not standard cannonball-based cannons. These are arcane in nature, and who knows what they're capable of when fired. Um, it is very dark, 
and you watch two figures kind of waltz in with haste. Um, you hear one voice, Ludinus, say, I couldn't help but gauge your discomfort with the conversation. And the other figure goes, uh, well, I just wasn't expecting to see them. And Ludinus goes, shh, hold on. Does some hand motions. And as he releases what looks to be a simple spell, there's this faint shockwave that dissipates within a radius of them. Uncertain what it does. Though you gather in the moment that it's probably some sort of a radial dispel to lock down or destroy any localized magic. Um, however, the illusion around Lord Desrin Thane vanishes. <gasps> and there standing uh, in his place is a gently floating male drow oh. with short hair. No. So blue, so beautiful. Look at it, the waves are so beautiful. To which the revealed Essex responds. No. But he don't. Of course I am uncomfortable with this. I did not know they were going to be coming directly here. And you can see, like, this conflict in his eyes, and Ludness goes, I understand, but it's extremely important how we enforce and oversee the control and the exchange of the prisoners and the delivery of the beacon. Essek kind of thinks for a second. I agree. Ludness goes, we each have what we want. And when this business is behind us, we need not interact ever again. The Assembly will share its research, put the deal, and beyond, and we never have to speak. And Essex sits and thinks for a second and goes, I look forward to never seeing your face again. But we're too far in at this point. It's taken a lot of effort to ensure the tracks have been covered, and no one undeserving was hurt. But I want no further part in this once this is done. Ludinus kind of steps forward and goes, I'm surprised to see such affection from such a previously cold individual. Nessa kind of turns his glance away and goes, well, I'm surprised myself. Maybe you should try friends sometime. It's gonna feel real bad when we kill him. <laughs> Hadishas is gonna do it. You've done a lot tonight. <laughs> going I, would, I would recommend, I would recommend Holding his hand, this may hurt. Or his abs. Or her abs. Hold my hand for. Just a second. What are we doing? We're just it's gonna, gonna be try fun. something. Have you ever gotten a tooth pulled? Yes. It's like that. That didn't feel very good. Well, then hold my hand. You can squeeze it as hard as you want. Do you want to bite down on something? You can oh. use my bow staff. This is making me feel. You want to bite on the bow staff? Oh, it's a little big. Oh, it's, uh, it's really big. <laughs> <laughs> Do, you me me Do you want me to tell you a joke to lighten the mood? Take a, take a swig from the flask. I have the buzz in my head. Okay, you'll be fine. Just <laughs> just for added bonus, I'm going to cast this at like sixth level. Fuck you! So I'm just going to just going to take the take the residuum and I'm just going to pulse it through you and see what happens and okay. give it a mark. A hundred golds worth of residuum off of oh, yours. My level six for the day. As you concentrate, Caduceus, and reach out towards Ford's chest, you find your vision darken, and your instinct immediately is, is that fight or flight, that, that fear impulse kick in. But you find yourself surrounded in warmth, like you were dropped into a warm bath. Caduceus, as you 
concentrate, the same lichen that grows upon your armor begins to grow from your fingertips and find its way gathering at the center of Ford's chest. This kind of bright pink plume of fungus begins to just grow and generate around the sternum. And you, in this moment with your eyes closed, that warmth, you feel this twinge of pain right there that begins to grow and grow and burn and sear. And you feel him, his hand squeeze tightly. Nausea begins to kick in, wave after wave, as this horrible pain begins to just burn from the inside. It is awful. It begins to come in such heavy waves that you find yourself falling to your knees and that nausea is burning heavily within the, the depths of your chest and belly. Caduceus, as you hold tightly, you watch as Caduceus falls to his knees and begins to just shudder. All of you begin to grow nervous with what is happening, especially with how now, barely recovering from the edge of death, he seems to be, to be convulsing in the way that he is. You're hurting him. I'm gonna link my arm in his arm just to keep him there and to keep him upright and, and safe. Okay. The pain begins to entirely consume your perspective. The warmth isn't there. The darkness is barely something you could concentrate on. It is just the pain, and it feels like a burning, white-hot poker right in the center of your chest, moving up towards your sternum, up to your clavicle, and as the nausea kicks in, you find yourself retching. You watch as Ford suddenly doubles over and vomits what seems to be gallons of frothy seawater onto the deck of the ship. This horrible, guttural, all muscles tensing vomit. Uh, and as the seawater splashes onto it with a heavy you see a singular cloven crystal. Don't touch it. Somebody pick it up with an object and let's put it in the bag as quickly as possible. Your All vision right. returns. Take it off my sash and scoop it up and tie it off. Let's put it. I hold back his little teeny man bun. <laughs> Holy shit! Put it in the bag as soon as oh, possible. It's coming right. out of your nose. Oh. I put it in this. It will be gone. Perfect. Gone. What does that mean? Gone. Oh, no. It's the how gone. It's the Amberstone. Well, no one can see me. Perfect. Let's Use my long right sleeve now. to wipe up Ford's face and mouth. 